Hey, welcome back, everybody. Of course, you know me. My name is Dr. Keith McNally. This is Coach's Corner, and I'm here with Timothy Dean Smith. And this is going to be a really wild conversation because Timothy is a leadership coach, and he calls himself a first-time leadership coach. And I love that idea because uh, I recently wrote a book called Walking the Path, A Leader's Journey, which talks about first-time leadership coaching. But from the perspective of you got to step in there and do it to learn how to do it. Timothy, when we first talked, you emphasized four, maybe five key points to your leadership coaching uh, structure. And I really want to get into that in this conversation. Is that okay? Absolutely. That's what we're here for. Cool. So first, let us know who you are. Give us some backstory really quick. And then let's get into your, your coaching. Yeah, I'm a uh, first-time leader coach. And that doesn't mean I'm doing this for the first time. I actually coach people that are going into leadership for the first time and helping them with that transition. I, I, I call it preparing the right people for the most important responsibility in the world, and that's leading people. My backstory is um, really quickly, I, I grew up in a teaching family. My mother was a fourth grade teacher. My dad was a phys ed teacher and a coach. And um, at the time of growing up, learning in school was not high on my list. <laughs> and um I've learned through a couple coaching sessions with my parents and then throughout life, I've really come to be inspired by learning things and sharing it with others. And I realized that uh, educating and training people is the makes all other uh, careers and avenues possible. So that's what I, I really like to do. And actually, I think one of my faults is I, I like to research too much now. I love going down rabbit holes and going deep in, into things. But it, in a nutshell, that's really my background. I had I coached at a very high level in football and played at a high level in football. So I kind of married the two uh, approaches to your typical uh, business type of coaching and leadership, along with the uh, typical athletic coaching and the leadership that goes on there. So I kind of married those two together and, and came up with a, my unique approach to helping first time leaders transition. Well, if I may, let me ask, um, how long have you been doing this, uh, this coaching stuff? First time leadership coaching. Uh, the first time leadership coaching. I started my business officially in January of 2011, but I like to call myself a crash test dummy for leader development. I've been doing it for in different aspects of my life for 40 years, you know, okay. four decades. Uh, I started out as uh, when I was still in high school. My first real coaching opportunity was to coach uh, Special Olympics. I was a bowling coach. I was probably 18 or 19. And uh, well, I was in high school, probably 17 or 18. And I had a bowling team that ranged from, I think 49 was the oldest to probably 12, maybe 14. And it was a real eye opener to me of what was really important. Um, I was teaching them how to bowl, we had the bumpers and everything, mm -hmm. but they got up there and bowled the ball and could care less what happened to the ball. They all, all they wanted to do was come back to me and either hug or high five me. And that, that was showing a true genuine interest in people as opposed to the process or the sport or whatever. So that was so, my first well, opportunity. Let me ask you then, what, what did that really give you in terms of insight into working with people? I think that was, and that was really good for you to learn that at a really young age, uh, 17, 18 years old. Yeah, it, it showed me how genuine interest in people is, regardless of your uh, challenges in life. It's always about people. People are the most important, period. Right. Um, you can't because um, you can't get any more important than that. Everything you do is associated with people that it, learning, developing, training, business. It's, it's always with people. There's getting to be a little more AI, artificial intelligence. So things like that, but you're still always going to have the people. And I always say, treat people like they make a difference and they will. So from that first experience, you had 40 years of different coaching, different leadership positions. And then in 2011, well, you're going to do this full time. Uh, so what does that look like? Let's get into your, your four, your four point leadership coaching strategy. What does that look like? Yeah, what what happens a lot of times in um, 
it, it's prerequisites over the course of these these 40 years i found that there's really four prerequisites that people need to have these i call them non-negotiable leader prerequisites cool. you you need to have these in order to be a true leader that's going to have any kind of influence over time um and the first one of the four is self leadership and this is the most important leadership it's just self leadership is a fancy way of saying how you lead your own life and if you if you're not good at leading your own life um and you're not somebody that other people would look to and emulate uh, as a leader um you got to check that one off but that one usually is taken care of because what happens most times and i call this um how to get ready your best people and wreck your culture in three easy steps this is what usually happens in an organization they'll see an individual contributor he or she's knocking it out of the park and they approach him or her and they say hey we want you to to lead this group now we want you to go from peer to leader and they 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 are approached because of their good self leadership usually in their their demeanor and the way they uh, perform so that's usually taken care of the second of the prerequisites is genuinely care about people and the word genuine is emphasized because you could say yeah well i care i care about people now just give me the extra money the extra responsibility i'll be fine well that will manifest itself over time and it'll be it won't take very long that people realize you don't care about them and you you've probably heard the old adage that you know people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care and that is really true the third prerequisite that uh, a potential leader should have is be inspired to lead people the word inspired is key uh and not motivated not um uh, somebody telling you hey you know you'd be a great leader you should be a leader you know if if you're not inspired internally or intrinsic mm -hmm. to lead people you shouldn't be leading people and then the fourth one is where i come in with my services and that you need to have what i call people centered leader skills and i train people on that and then i coach them afterwards so those are really the four prerequisites again self leadership genuinely care about people inspired to lead people and you know you uh, have the people centered leader skills to lead successfully if you're missing any of those you really shouldn't go into leadership because it would just be a matter of time and you heard me allude to you know getting ready your best people in three easy steps and wrecking your culture simultaneously what happens is uh typically someone will be uh promoted they'll see receive little to no training or maybe improper training and they say okay they're good to go and get some OJT and you're all set to go what happens over time is they will ultimately fail if if you don't um you know you don't genuinely care for people you're not inspired to lead people and you aren't trained you're eventually going to fail and what happens most people say well i don't want to look like a failure and go back to my um you know pre-leadership role back into the peer group um so what they do is they, a lot of times they make the decision to leave the organization and what happens is now you've got a void you you just lost one of your best performers and then the remaining the people that remain are very hesitant whenever they're approached to go into leadership because they, I don't want to go through that myself so it, that's really the three easy steps that people use uh unknowingly to get rid of their best people only if they have the prerequisites on the front end and then actually follow up coaching after they're trained on the other end to make sure you ease them into it and the the number is huge it's 60% of first time leaders fail within the first 18 months to 2 years that's way too high so i i prevent that failure so in well let me ask you in what way do you pre prevent that failure so are you working in uh, you do corporations con you know get in touch with you or do individuals churches like who do you who who contacts you for service it um i've had it's mostly organizations sometimes you'll have uh institutions of higher learning will will uh, have me come in do their uh you know some of their workforce development type of activity that way um it, and it, i've got some nonprofits that i i've worked with leadership is leadership because you're leading people so okay. that doesn't change it's just the only thing that's different is what the the people are doing whatever the the mission is the mission is what you do and how you do it 
Okay. So when I say I prepare the right people for the most important responsibility in the world, leading people, the right people, meaning they've gone through those prerequisites and they are someone that would be highly successful leading people. If they have, if they're missing one or all those prerequisites, then I, I recommend that they don't, unless it's the last prerequisite training, everybody can be trained. But two of those is really how you feel. Genuinely care about people. And if you're inspired to lead people, those I can't really train you on. That's a decision you have to make yourself and it has to be genuine. So if people have the, the prerequisites, I can train them. And then to become a leader, see, people have the notion that you can make someone a leader in a classroom. You can't do that. You can, you can learn how to be a leader in a classroom. But to become an actual leader, you need to get out amongst your team, interact on a daily basis, okay? And then when leadership happens, and the, the way that it happens is people decide, internal, intrinsic, they make the decision to follow you. Now, they may follow you because you have a title, you can control their paycheck, you can control their hours, all sorts of things. They may give you the illusion that they're following you if you're like a dictator or somebody that drives a, a tight ship and you're not really people oriented. But if you're a true leader and you care for people, you're inspired to lead people and you set the environment up for them to succeed, uh, they will make the decision to follow you. And that's when leadership happens. Well, how long does your coaching last for? Like, is it, is it a couple of weeks Is it a couple of months? Um, if somebody contacts you and says, I really want to train up my team because I want to establish that culture in my organization. How big is that investment? Not monetarily, but in time and effort. The time I've got it boiled down to five hours. And typically what I do is I have the session from seven 30 in the morning to 1230 in the afternoon. And it's, it's heavily laden with information but it, I, I like to use the analogy, I feed people with a spoon as opposed to a snow shovel. So I, I, we ease into the information and a lot of the information is very easy to comprehend and, 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 and put into play when they understand what it is. Because I boil, it's like you, you like sap that you get from a tree and you make uh, maple syrup out of it. You know, I boil it down. I get rid of some of the erroneous information. And, you know, some people have training sessions that go for, weeks or months. And I personally don't feel that the, the you don't need that long to do the fundamentals, put the fundamentals in place, teach them how to, to lead people. And I really boil it down into three things. You coach people, manage processes, which is everything else, and get out of the way. Those are three skills that, that you need to, to be a leader. So there is some coaching, but you coach people, you don't manage people, you coach people, manage processes, and you need to know when to get out of the way or when to roll up your sleeves and get involved and, and help people. With the amount of time that we have left, I have two questions, really important questions for you. Ready? All right, doctor, here we go. The first question is, how do people get in touch with you? Where are you on the web? Okay, just go to my uh, website, which is tdspi.com. And that stands for it's my initials, TDS, and then the PI is Performance Improvement. Dot com so tdspi.com and you can go you can go to my speaker profile from there you can go uh, you can check out my leader development uh, offerings from there that's the one stop URL tdspi.com and I believe I found you on LinkedIn so I'm going to put that in the description of this video as well yep. and the important question please leave our audience today with something that they can do that if they don't fit one of those four categories that you talked about earlier, that they can change in order to fit. Absolutely. You can just take a good hard look at yourself. And, and on my website, you'll see a number of places where you can you can click on find out and it takes you right to an online, uh, the prerequisites right there. And you can answer the four questions. And then you'll also, as, as, as by submitting that, you'll get a free uh, professional assessment guide that I put together to help posture yourself professionally and also personally. But um, if they um, they look at those prerequisites and if they take a hard look at themselves, they say, yeah, I, I really do care about people. I, I, 
I really do. And most people do. It It's very hard to find people that too, don't generally care about people. And then this is the tough one. This can go either way. You know, are you inspired to lead people? Meaning, is it a decision on your part that I want to lead people? I want to make a difference. You know, so they look at those prerequisites. And it, if you're solid on those prerequisites, and then the fourth one is the, the training, um, then, then I can definitely help you out there. And then we augment that at the end with however long you determine you needed the monthly coaching. And maybe it's one month, maybe it's two months. I recommend at least six months just to get yourself acclimated and kind of be exposed to a lot of the scenarios you're going to see over the course of six months. Cool. Timothy, thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Coach's Corner. I wish thank you, you all the me. success. And for those of you who are listening and watching, take care. We'll see you next time. All right. Thank you.